All right, so in my last video, I went over the subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up atoms. And in this video, we're going to discuss how we define an element. And the way that we define an element is based on the number of these subatomic particles. So if you look at your periodic, periodic table, you'll find that you have a bunch of squares with uh, various information, various numbers, symbols, and perhaps even names within those squares. So basically what this is, is just this is just one square cut out of a periodic table. Now, the, the biggest number in this square which is usually found at the top, but also might, it might be found in a corner of it somewhere, but usually the number that has the biggest font size, we call that the atomic number. And the reason why this number has the biggest font size is because this is the most important number. This number is what defines the element. And what is the atomic number? Well, the atomic number is simply the number of protons in the nucleus. P1 means proton. So the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus and if we have an atomic number uh, other than 26 then we have an element other than iron. So two elements cannot have the same two atomic numbers. That's impossible. These letters, these letters here, this is just the chemical symbol, which is either a one or two word summary of what the element is. So each element also has a unique chemical symbol. And notice that in this chemical symbol, this is a two letter chemical symbol. Notice that the second letter of the chemical symbol is lowercase and the first letter of the symbol is capital. And this is important. So if you're one of those people that likes to write in capital letters all the time, well, in chemistry, you're going to have to knock that off because suppose you're trying to give the symbol for cobalt. Well, if you write C, cap, capital C, capital O, well, you're not talking about cobalt. You're talking about something. You're talking about a carbon and an oxygen. So the correct symbol for cobalt would be C, lowercase O, not C, capital O. So, you know, just watch out for that. This word here, this is just the name of the element. So in this particular case, the name of the element is iron. And this 55.847 number down here, we call that the atomic mass. So each square of the periodic table has at least this information, um, with the exception of the name. Not all periodic tables have the name in there. So now we're going to go into how the, the notation that we use to describe these atoms. So in general, uh, the notation has the following form. We have a capital X, and before that we have a superscript A, and then a subscript Z. The X is just going to be the symbol. So in the case of iron, the symbol would be Fe. <clears throat> -E. The A is what we call the mass number. And be careful because the mass number and the atomic mass are two entirely different things. Uh, they are sort of related and we'll go into how they're related in another video. But the mass number is actually the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the atom. So P1 plus N0. That is the mass number. And finally, our Z, that is our atomic number. So if we wanted to show the symbol for iron, our X would be Fe. 
and our z would be 26. What about our a though? Our a is our mass number, and our mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Would we put 55.847 for the a? No, we wouldn't because I just said that the atomic mass and the mass number are different. The atomic mass is something entirely different from the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the number of neutrons isn't really expressed anywhere in this square, and the reason why it's not expressed is because the the atomic mass, or excuse me, the mass number could actually be different even if you have the same atomic number. And that is where isotopes come into play. So isotopes are just atoms of the same element, so in other words they have the same number of protons or the same atomic number that have unequal masses. So in the case of iron, you have the atomic number 26, that never changes, but your A term, your mass number, can actually change. In other words, iron may have more than one isotope. And it turns out that iron actually has four isotopes. So let's go ahead and just write down the four isotopes of iron real quick. And the four isotopes of iron look like this. So we have since they're the same element, the chemical symbols are always going to be the same. And the atomic numbers are going to be the same too, so I'll just go ahead and put a 26 everywhere. But our mass numbers are going to be different, and the four naturally occurring isotopes of iron have mass numbers of 54, 56, 57, and 58. So this is the notation for the four isotopes, the four naturally occurring isotopes of iron. So now we're in a position where we can find the number of neutrons. We said that the lower number is the, is the atomic number, the number of protons, and the upper number is the mass number, or the number of protons plus neutrons. So if we take the mass number A, and we subtract from that the atomic number Z, so in the case of this one here, it would be 58 minus 26, well then we'll get 32 neutrons. So that's pretty straightforward. And now let's go over some of the other ways that these isotopes are expressed. So this is one way to say it. This is one way to write out the uh, the different isotopes of iron, but there's a couple other ways that, that are, uh, some of them are easier you know, to, um, to express this. So notice that our number 26 doesn't change. So in other words, our 20, since, our, since our 26 doesn't change, it's, you, you can understand it to be there. So we don't even really need to include it. You can just look up your periodic table right away and figure out that there's 26 protons in an atom of iron. So this is another, so this is another way of expressing these isotopes is just by omitting the atomic number and just understanding it to be there. Another, another way to do this is by separating the symbol and the mass number by a hyphen. So for this isotope of iron, we would call this iron 54. And we can also do the same thing using the name. So we could say iron hyphen 54 or iron 54. 
So yeah, those are just some of the uh, different ways of expressing isotopes of a given element. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful.